Hello. <laughs> um, I'd like to thank friends, family, and faculty for being here to celebrate with us today. And I'd like to thank my fellow graduates for being here to celebrate with us every day. It's fair to say that during my past four years at Barnard, I've fallen in love with America. And I mean deeply, smittenly, unconditionally in love. In high school, at my most rebellious, I had dreams of going to college in some romanticized foreign place. I didn't really feel at home in a country that seemed hungry for war and scandal, blind to pollution, inequity, and the condition of the human spirit. I craved to be part of a proud tradition, and instead, I was unsure what it would mean to reach adulthood, womanhood, personhood in this America. Now it's been four years, and I'm a Barnard English major, which I think has made all the difference. In my courses of study each semester, my professors reintroduced me to the characters of our history, and I met America through its great writers. I read Adams and Jefferson, who taught me about the optimism of democracy. And then I read Frederick Douglass, who showed me some of its failings. Emerson and Thoreau explained to me the sublime and transcendental majesty of the land we live on. William Apis, a Pequot, taught me who would walk the land before it was America. Fitzgerald showed me wealth and Hemingway war, while well, Morrison and Hurston showed me the strength of women. Dickinson made me want to try and try and try again to understand. <laughs> Faulkner taught me about bearing burdens. I could go on and on about them in the same way that I talk about my wonderful friends and roommates, favorite professors and parents, because these are the people who have taught me who I am. New York is such a worldly cosmopolitan place, which is part of what thankfully brought me to Barnard. As global as it is, New York has also been a crossroads of America. This is where Walt Whitman sang a joyous song of myself, and Langston Hughes replied, I too sing America. In our time at college, we welcome those who are working to shape our country today. We saw Hillary Clinton in Barnard Hall, and we heard President Obama's inauguration on the steps at Columbia. We got to spend our days with brilliant scholars, many of whom changed our, our minds and perhaps changed our lives. And we've become acquainted with those who will write the next chapter in the story of our society, our classmates. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with my life yet. <laughs> A lot of us aren't sure what we're going to do with our lives yet. I wrote my senior thesis on a great American novel, Moby Dick. In my thesis, I wrote about the philosophical sublime in Moby Dick. And sometimes, even though I don't know what I'm going to do, I wish that I wanted something as badly as Ahab wanted that whale. The sublime is that sensation that comes with recognizing the vast magnitude of the world we live in. It's the experience of witnessing infinity. It's the feeling of both terror and delight at the same time. The sublime is to stand on the precipice of greatness, which is where we're all standing today. That feeling of terror is important to the sublime, and it's okay to be afraid, guys but we have far, far more to delight in. We're lucky that Barnard has endowed us with the skill, compassion, and curiosity needed to step off that precipice, knowing we will land on our feet, able to pursue happiness. In all of my uncertainty about the future, I still feel that America is a place full of infinite potential, a nation that flung itself into existence not so long ago, and that's something to be excited about. Let's remember those who have taught us, in classrooms, in homes, and in books. And let's go out and do right by them. And let's do right by ourselves. Congratulations and thank you. Woo!